So the first main step to weight loss is really in your head. It's first changing the mental part. It's changing our aspects of motivation, how we view things. You know, when I shadowed a dietitian in Australia, he had a really great way of, of helping people in their weight loss by changing their, their mentality to help them, you know, change their behavior. The thing is, you want to start your journey of setting a goal, right? You want to set a goal. This is how many pounds I want to lose. You know, this is what I want to be able to do or fit in this dress by this time. We want our goal to be a positive goal with a positive reason behind it. So, positive goal, losing weight, right? But we always have this this negative connotation that I want to lose weight because I look bad. You know, I, I want to be able to look hot and pretty like those girls in those skinny dresses. And, you know, I want to be able to wear that swimsuit because right now I look bad. So you're always adding that negative connotation. You, you feel bad about yourself, right? And that's not the positive reason. Or positive reason should be, I want to lose weight so that I can, you know, be able to run fast after my kids or be able to run a 5K with my friends because they do it and it's fun and then we go out for drinks after. Or, you know, I, you know, I want to just feel good about myself. Um, so creating that positive mindset, thinking about the endless possibilities of what will happen when you lose weight in that journey. But it's also that now mentality. What, so what's happening now? Um, if I have depression and, you know, high functioning anxiety, or I deal with some other mental illnesses like bipolar or other things, that really truly affects your weight loss journey. It really stops some people and holds them from beginning this journey. Or being able to even create that positive reasoning, right, for your goal. I mean, it, with someone with depression, I've been through it and I know exactly the feeling. And I'm literally saying this out of experience. Someone going through depression, whether it's temporary or, you know, it's been years. Sometimes it could just come out of, you know, an event or something that's happening. You don't like your job. You don't like where you live. You're in a bad relationship. Okay, you're in depression, whatever the reason. Your reasoning behind things is always negative, right? You always think, oh my God, why did this happen to me? You know, I, I'm never going to be, you know, lose weight or I'm never going to be happy, all these things. So having that positive reasoning behind wanting to lose weight is almost impossible, and that is literally the reason people cannot lose weight. So let's go from that situation. You're depressed. You can't find that positive reason. Yeah, the only, po the only reason you want to lose weight is so that you'll feel better about yourself. Hey, maybe I'll be happy if I lose weight, right? So you're still coming from that negative place. Well, maybe I'll be happy. I'm not happy now. This sucks. Everything sucks. So... You're just in this endless cycle, this dead end cycle that seems like a really big, bad, deep hole. And it's really sad because it's so hard to get out of, right? So you're like, okay, maybe let's start from there. I'm depressed, but maybe I'll be happy once I lose weight. All right, let me go on this fad diet. Everyone's talking about keto. Do keto, but your emotions daily stops you from doing a lot of these extreme diets. And let me tell you why. First of all, your hormones are, your levels are off when you're depressed. You have a high cortisol level, cortisol level, which is a stress hormone. You have lower levels of serotonin, which is the happy hormone. So your body is constantly kind of craving and looking for something that'll give you that happy 
you know, kick of serotonin, the happy hormone. So, you know, for others that may be food. So looking for that piece of chocolate makes them happy, or it could even be, you know, the vices of the world, alcohol, even drugs, or, you know, things like that. So we're constantly in this like deprivation cycle, looking for the thing that's making us happy. You're just searching and searching. Okay. So it's like that that cycle, okay? Another cycle you're going through. So if you're going to an extreme diet like keto, right? Keto cuts out carbs. The only carbs you can have is like, I don't know, from a piece of cheese, which is very low in carb. You know, it's higher in fat. But they make your body go into ketoacidosis. Okay, so you're in this you're in this um keto diet which you think is going to make you happy. You're depriving yourself of a huge macro essential nutrient, which is carbs. Okay, so now your body is going off more out of whack. Okay, you're you're not going to be burning calories. You in the beginning, you'll burn all of the calories, the carb, sorry, carb storage that you have. Carbs can be stored. They're not even stored. They're the first um, source of energy your body uses daily, you know, to get to wake up and get in your car or to clean your house. Then it takes in the storage from your muscles and from fat. Once it goes to muscle storage, it's stored as glycogen. There's nothing left. Then your body starts to use some fat. Okay, your fat storage, the extra fat you have. Then your body's going to break down and use protein. So in ketoacidosis, there's literally no more carb storage in your body, right? So your body's going to break down fat and then protein. So that's ketoacidosis. So now your body's even more deprived. It's going through this cycle. Um, And when you're in this keto diet, you know, you start to crave carbs and all these things. So your body's constantly craving. Your body's craving for that happy hormone. And your body's craving for carbs because that's naturally what it's using as its main source of energy. So now you're tired and now you're craving energy. So now you're still sad. You're not energized. So And being depressed even, you know, makes you not energized. You feel tired all the time and fatigued. So you have nothing. All right. And then you're like, this isn't working for me. You know, you're cutting carbs, but then you're just binging. Okay. So keto diet, you're allowed to eat all the fat and protein you want. You're allowed to eat all this bacon. You're allowed to eat meat. Okay. So you're eating all this stuff and you're probably binging. You're probably eating excessive amounts and quantities of these fat and protein sources excessive anything in food Ex- excessive fat and protein probably means excessive calories which means weight gain the the math is clearly simple 3500 calories equal 1 pound you know usually you're not intaking 3500 calories a day so you're not gaining Um, If you're, you know, daily living, going to work, getting up and your metabolism is burning calories. So you're not going to gain one pound a day. But, you know, over the course of a week, those extra calories could add up to 3,500 calories and you could even be gaining weight or just at a standstill and not even losing. So again, extremes. If you're coming from a, a place of mental illness of, you know, whether it's the depression or it's anxiety or it's anything, OCD, your body's already kind of in a state of an extreme, right? You have an extreme imbalance of chemicals and hormones. So going on these diets from that negative source is just leading to more imbalance and deprivation. So we need to step back from these extremes and you know even if you have a pretty good level um of mental illness and you know you don't really have an imbalance and there's not really an illness there extremes are still not sustainable and they're not something i advise because it could kind of lead you into that cycle right of extremes extreme dieting deprivation leading to binging then you come out of these diets and you really don't know what is what 
what's healthy? How do I even eat right? Do I eat now? Should I wait three hours later? Should I starve myself? Should I wait till I'm starving? Is this salad healthy? Is this meat even healthy? People get so confused and that is the problem. We're losing sight of the basics of nutrition, nutrition science. I mean, it's not even a science, it's nature. It's what our body does. So we're, you know, trying to get away from what our body needs. And I'm not saying if your body's saying, you know, you need donuts, go get the donuts all the time. You know, you can give into your cravings once in a while. Again, it's creating that balance. Okay. Um, so I just really think that you need to take a step back and really look at a better strategy. So going back to somebody with mental illness, um, let's say depression again, what what can your goal be? Okay, my goal can be, yes, I want to lose weight. That's the big goal. But why do I want to lose weight? I want to lose weight, okay, to be happy, right? But that's that shouldn't really be your goal. Say, yeah, I want to lose weight, but Write down how you lose weight, okay? How you lose weight is calorie deficit, you know, and that's eating healthier because, you know, losing weight does not equal healthy. Healthy means we have the micronutrients, macronutrients, vitamins, minerals, water, electrolytes, all the things our body needs to properly function. And all those nutrients, those vitamins, those minerals, that water help our body function in our metabolism. It All the systems that make energy, that break down food, that provide energy, that get the blood circulating, use all these vitamins and minerals all in different ways, right? Vitamin D is for your bones. It helps, you know, in that process of building bone, building muscle, okay? So you need that. So you want to think about that. You want to think about, oh my God, my body's doing all these things. How can I help it? by fueling it with that right energy, right? So fruits and vegetables have a lot of those minerals. And that's why people say, this is a super natural, this is a super fruit. This is that because it's packed with many vitamins and minerals, not just one. Okay. You can find a lot of foods like that, which are fruits and vegetables. Um, Our body also needs protein. And most of that protein is found in lean meats, um, dairy, and even soy and some nuts. Okay. So, you know, kind of going back to those basics that, you know, that really simple basic um, science and just, you know, natural programming of our body. And you want to also think about moving your body. Um, And I'm not saying to go do CrossFit and lift a Hummer truck and do 5Ks every weekend. No. The key to fitness and working out is finding something, one, that is convenient. Finding a gym that's close to you, that you know you can get to, that you know you'll want to get up and go to, either driving through to, or maybe saying, I'll go to the park because I really like the park and I like being outdoors. And, you know, nature quiets me and it will be fun to do. Or I love tennis. I used to play. Let me go play tennis. It's convenient. It's up the street. It's convenient, one. Two, it's something like that you can be consistent with. So like convenience, um, I can get there at this time after work. I can get there before work. I have an hour break at lunch. I can go do it then. Um, you like actually going. If you like Zumba, do Zumba. If you don't like yoga, don't do yoga. You can do a different class. You could do stuff on your own. You could do a YouTube video. You can go with a friend. You can hire a trainer. You don't have to do things that you don't want to do. If you like a certain workout, do it. Any workout can help you in your weight loss journey. Second is, again, your preference. If you like running, go be a runner. Now, the thing is, cardio or weights, cardio or weights, listen, both. You need both. Cardio helps your cardiovascular system get the blood oxygen going. Um, It helps your lung capacity. You want to be able to have a good lung capacity. Again, too much cardio is not that great um, for your body and, you know, even for your heart. So it's all about balance. 
I would say, you know, 150 minutes of exercise per week, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of cardio a day is good. That could be long walks, that can be Zumba, that could be kickboxing, that could be, you know, running, that could be jump rope, okay, any sort of cardio. You want resistance. Resistance is important in weight loss because resistance helps build muscle mass, right? You want muscle. Your body composition should be more muscle mass versus fat. And the way you build more muscle mass is not just not by losing weight. It's by resistance training. Two to five times a week is great. You always want a rest day. Resistance training could be Body weight, push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups. It could be with dumbbells, with barbells. It could be with kettlebells. It could be with resistance bands. Um, It could be by boxing, punching a heavy bag. So there's lots of ways to do resistance training, but resistance training is important. Weight training. You want muscle mass, not just cardio. Um, When you lose weight, if you, you know, you can really break down um, fat, and it could even go into breaking down your muscle. Um, that's more of a malnutrition. That's more of starvation, a little bit of eating disorder area, but you always want to build your muscle mass while, tr- um, working out. Um, and that could be very, um, weary because of the scale, the scale might not move down, but you're changing your body composition, which is great. If you're getting more muscle and you're not seeing a lot on the scale, that's okay. You can, that will be solved later. Um, More muscle mass means you're, you know, it's great as you age because as we age, we lose muscle mass and bone density. Um, So resistance training helps delay that aging process. Also, having more muscle versus fat in our body is better for our metabolism. It helps us burn more calories throughout the day. Um, Muscle burns more calories than fat. So your body's using your muscle to move and for energy. So it's burning a lot more calories in that process, Um, you know, for your walking around to to pick up stuff, to clean your house. It's working those muscles. So you're burning more calories um, than having more fat would. So just to sum up, if you're thinking about calories, what to burn, cardio burns calories that you just consumed. So it'll burn your first source of energy. It'll start burning carbs and what you just ate. So if you just ate before your run, it's going to burn those calories first. Um, And muscle, when you're resistance training, it helps your metabolism burn calories throughout the day. So after that, your metabolism is going to be spiked up. So I really advise both. It's the healthiest Um you know, for your inner body and for your mental health and outside um, and for your body composition for, you know, firming up or toning up, like they say, you know, you want to have muscle um, and you want to have a good cardio system Um, and you can lose weight without working out, but working out is better. So going back to mental health and creating those habits, You want to create a habit, so creating that, you know, positive why. But then you want to say, what can I do every day to help myself through this journey? So, you know, changing that goal of weight loss, saying, okay, instead of saying I'm going to lose weight through this depression, I'm going to turn it and say, I'm going to do something every day that I like to do. I'm going... And then I'm going to help my body in some way, doing something that I know is good for my body. Okay, so I'm going to do something I like, maybe call a friend, meet a friend, read a book, watch a funny show, something that I know makes me happy, spikes my serotonin. Okay, and two big next one, what can I do to help my body each day? That could be exercise or eating healthier or, you know, taking care of your skin or something. So you could say, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to stretch. I'm going to meditate. Or I'm going to do, going back to goal number one, what you like to do. I really like to box. 
punch the bag, let out some energy. I'm going to do that. I really like to go for a walk outside at my favorite park. I'm going to do that. So those two things are big, doing something you like and something good for your body, something you know is good for your body, okay? So getting away from the can't, I can't sit on the couch for an hour, I can't eat those cookies, I can't do anything that makes me happy. No, going towards the can. I can do something I like today and I can do something good for my body those two things during your depression or during that, you know, really discouraging, no motivation to get on your weight loss journey. Start with those two things. I'm going to do something I like every day and I'm going to do something good for my body every day. So those two things can help you find you know, a good fitness or workout routine, whether that's at home, that's at the park, it's with a friend, it's with a trainer, it's at a gym, it's at a dance studio, maybe you like to do dance, go find what you like that also helps you with your body, uh, moving your body, being healthy. Um, I'm going to learn to cook is another thing. I'm going to um, you know, make my favorite salad. So upping those vegetables, things like that. So moving away from that negative mindset and that big intimidating thing of losing weight, changing my lifestyle, going extreme, get away from the extreme, the big lifestyle change and go to baby steps. What can I do each day to form a good habit that makes myself feel good? I started, you know, in high school, um, going to the gym or working out every day after school. And it really helped me. And that just, you know, came through with me through college. It came with me through work, working out in the morning before work. I really saw a difference in my mood and my mental aspect that I really was ready to start the day. I was ready to talk to people. I was ready to you know, go my goals. I was really creative after and it really helped me. Um, so when you say working out is not your thing, think of it as not this like horrible, I have to go work out. It's just something, you know, find something you like to do that helps you move your body and get away from all these extremes. There's no magic. There is no diet that'll help you. You can only help yourself and finding a good support, something you like to do, having that community feel can really help you. But it's really getting your mind right. If you need to see a therapist, if you need to get on medicine or off medicine or finding the medicine that helps you balance your chemicals and your hormones, find it and do it. Um, So the first step is in your mind. Getting away from these huge expectations, these extremes, this deprivation, and finding balance in your life and moderation and making daily positive habits, not lifestyle changes, habits, something you can add to your day rather than take away from your day. So I hope you find that and It takes time. So allow yourself time to quiet yourself and find what you really want and be able to achieve it and go inner rather than looking outer.